when we're doing these uh, videos, sometimes there's criticism on the fact that we're dealing more in the law books than we're dealing with, uh, say, uh, the prime focus, which we really want people to be on, which is the Bible. The problem being is for a lot of people, uh, the, the feet they're or where their feet are at the moment is not in this book. And we want to bring them there, but they need to know where they are first. So when we're dealing with law, then we might as well talk about the laws of these nations and what they do. So to an extent, there's a lot of generalized law information in a lot of the uh, um, books such as Black's Law, Canadian Law Dictionary. Uh, there's the laws of England. There's many, many research law books that you can find out of how in general law works and how it deals with the arms clause and the arms name, the surname that's in your name. But we're concentrating on this so that we get people to understand where they are at this particular moment if they're a participant. Almost like you're in the army with a post. So you're already in, so therefore we need to talk to you at that stage. There's no point me talking to you away from that because the problem is you're already in the position of the participant. You're already bearing arms. You're already in the civil situation. You're a civil situation. You're already uh, in a, uh, a, civ a civil activity um, acting as a civilian participant and therefore as this prisoner of war that we've made ourselves by not being at peace with Christ, we are in a cage that we are consenting to be in by lack of knowledge, by being ignorant of the truth of God's word, which clearly says what to do and what not to do. When we fail to do what is right, we are in the wrong. And therefore, we will be treated as those in the wrong. You can't expect to lay down with fleas or lay down with dogs and not wake up with fleas. It goes with the territory. So in the sense, if you are involved in something that is incorrect, that incorrect association is going to make you incorrect also. We're here to correct your thought and to give you answers to questions that have not been answered by those that we look up to in general that are supposed to be teaching and showing us because they're too comfortable in the incorrect position. So what the government does in general is it is penalizing people under a state of corrections for doing the wrong thing. And therefore it operates as such. It has no other way because it's got all these participants that are doing the wrong thing. And therefore, it becomes a necessary in their world evil to penalize evil through the enforcement of evil. Uh, we're dealing with the word color. And uh, when we're talking about uh, colorable, uh, the video, An Innocent Man, which we can probably bring back or refer to, had a really good segment on a man who was set up. He's a participant in society, appeared to be a fairly, um, you know, above average earner, who uh, is played by Tom Selleck in the movie. And uh, Tom Selleck basically is framed for a crime because of a botched raid at an address where a narcotics uh, team had basically uh, gone to the wrong place and then ended up having to cover their steps because they had shot him in the process thinking that he was involved in some kind of illegal activity. Uh, in the process he was framed and therefore they go and get a criminal lawyer and the criminal lawyer basically goes into a small, I would say, I call it a little bit of a rant on how the system operates. And he quoted pretty much to this uh, situation in his words it's not a question of innocence or guilt it's about persuasion maneuvering the appearance of guilt it doesn't matter that all the evidence is false so what he was saying was there's an appearance of guilt well 
when you appear with the name that they're accusing, you're already deemed to be guilty. Unlike in the common law system, you had to be proven to be guilty. So there had to be, at the mouth of two witnesses, a matter is established. Well, if you notice the statement of birth record, there is no two witnesses to establish any guilt of anything that was written in as, an esta as a statement by the informants on who the child was. And because it was not supportable under common law, and because the nation itself, generally Canada, was founded on common law, as was Britain, it did not support this. Because there, was not, there wasn't, at the mouth of two witnesses, a matter being established, and therefore no one really witnessed to be able to prove that the information on here was, in the sense, correct in itself. The only thing that was correct was really left on there, and left up for those with eyes to see to realize the only thing that was really on this birth document that was proper, correct, sufficient, and satisfying is the Christian name. The surname would never be sufficient because it's debt. And therefore, it was not required under common law to have that, so they canceled it out. Now, interestingly, the next document that they pull out, which we give, um, we use generally these birth certificates which have color on them. But if we use this for something that it's not meant to be, that would be considered a colorable right. Well, we're going to go into the word color and see what the law defines it as. Color and appearance, semblance, as distinguished from that which is real. So the surname is really colorable. It's saying it's over and above and supreme to the Christian name. It has a colorable right over and above. And certainly would be if you're using it and then you're claiming it, it could have duty, debt, obligation attached to it. And therefore you're assuming a colorable right. It says prima facie or apparent right. Hence a deceptive appearance, a plausible assumed exterior, concealing a lack of reality, a disguise or pretext. Well, we know that's what a persona is, and we know that's what titles were. And we went back to the book of Job, um, where it said, do not accept any flattering titles. And we knew that that led back to, in the Hebrew, uh, uh, basically research on the use of the English word there for title, it, or accepting any man's person, led to the word surname. So that was the first time I'd actually see a complete understanding and research done in that uh, through the Strong's Concordance. I had... I had uh, not seen it only until about maybe about six to eight months ago. But it was there in front of me just because I didn't see it and I didn't have the research on it didn't mean that it wasn't there. So that's why it's a requirement of all to do their own due diligence and research. Generally what happens is when we haven't done the research then we start to cower around and defend things because it's inconvenient in our mind because it would go against what someone else told me or what someone else preached on a pulpit to me or what some political official told me or what some lawyer or some doctor told me because they were already in the wrong but they didn't know any different. So therefore, of course, the only information or the only counsel they could give me would be wrong information. But it's right information for if you're going to continue in the wrong, what they're telling you. But it's not right information to get out of the wrong. They're only telling you how to proceed and make it worse. Because generally, they're benefiting from something that allows you to stay in the wrong. So as long as I have the benefit of the doubt, and that's what everybody's taking right now in this system is a benefit of the doubt. They're benefits from something that's doubtful, and it's very doubtful that we would have any authority to a fictitious name. And it would be very doubtful that God would need us to lie in order to tell truth. And it would be very doubtful that grace is the same as legal. And they're always looking for your legal name. Well, then they don't need your grace name. But if they're asking me to confirm the legal name, how can I confirm something I don't have evidence of or have ever been proven that there's really a title for it? But if I regularly use it, I'm damned by my regular usage of it. Further it goes, uh, the word also means the dark color of skin, 
so we know we also use it sometimes they've used that as a slang somewhat expression to refer to people of, of black origin and we know how badly they've treated people of black origin over the centuries so we can understand that there may be not such a great idea of colorable title we can see by history that some things are evidently portrayed in the actions uh, with the use of the words now we go on further, it says color of authority, this, that semblance or presumption of, of authority sustaining the acts of a public officer, which is derived from his apparent title to the office or from a writ or other process in his hands, apparently valid and regular. Now we know that we refer to most nations as de facto, not de jure, but they have colorable title for the time being, so they enforce colorable title. But you may not have the authority for colorable title. You may just be assuming you even have colorable title against those who are the ones enforcing colorable title. So it means that you've kind of made it even worse. You got involved in something that you never really had any evidence to be involved in. Then we've got color of law, the appearance or semblance without substance of legal right. Now we know de facto does not have true legal right. It's colorable light over de jure. De jure was like those by right through royal bloodlines that had the right to title. They had the right to the throne. They had the right to the crown. They had the right to all the arms. They had the right to all that stuff. And they granted these. But then later we know that a man's journey through de facto goes the other way. And so we have now a concern uh, because the only thing you could use to enforce colorable right that's already been satisfied or basically the, the, the title that's already been gone away and pledged um, is enforced through a third party. And the third party needs your consent to be involved in this colorable assumption of right. And therefore, we've got color of title. And color of title is the apparent semblance or uh, basically what they use in, uh, in uh, basically uh, language uh, I believe most likely uh, I'm reading something to do with Latin, which would be simulacrum of title. So it's not, it's a, it's, it looks like the semblance of title or the, what looks like title, but it's not really title. And we know that the real title is with Christ. We know that's really the true title, but they are not going to admit that. Evil will not admit that in itself. So if you join into the aggregate of evil, then evil has its own way of enforcing on that. And of course, that would have to leave you as a debtor to guarantor only something that could only be a lie. And so we are the direct result of our own consent and injury to ourselves by our own signatures and subscribing to such things and then trying to not honor them. So our journey down this spends uh, at times too much time wondering how they're going to try to outwit those that participate in the uh, semblance or color of title and trying to figure we're going to outwit their system and how they run their, their uh, banking and numbers. And I think that's just a ridiculous thing. This is where people are just wasting their time and efforts down journeys that are, they're never going to solve. The idea is to get to the solution, not stay anymore in the problem. And the only thing I could see uh, from this is what we are doing in f uh, further videos that you're going to see in sequence that are dealing with what would you be able to do as a... Um, I would, I would just say honest man in a situation of a dishonest world that says you must be dishonest with something in your name, claiming to pretend to be something you're not, uh, so you can be a somebody in the body corporate instead of being a nobody. Um, so hopefully in the solutionist you'll, you'll be pretty much seeing that you'll be walking in the spirit uh, and uh, not in the body.